you, you said so many cases uh, in developing countries, mm -hmm. small business, you know, small money. But do you think that microfinance can apply to developed countries or cities like in Hong Kong? Sure. I think it's a great question and one that we're still, as an industry, the mm -hmm. microfinance industry, trying to answer. Grameen Foundation itself has not been as directly involved, but let me talk a little bit about the broader industry. Mm. Um, starting with Professor Yunus, he's always been interested in how there could be microfinance on a large scale in America. Mm. We have poverty in America, mm. and oh, yes, given sure, the current sure, sure. economic yeah. conditions, we have more and more people yes. in poverty. Yes. And Professor Yunus really believes that this presents an opportunity to use the principles of microfinance yes. there. He's recently started uh, an organization called Grameen America that's mm. working in New York mm. City, mm. Uh, in the Queensboro, which is mm. an uh, immigrant neighborhood, okay. uh, to try to really show that microfinance can grow and work. And this is in its very early stages. Mm. But this is not the first time he's been involved. Um, actually, in the 80s, Bill and Hillary Clinton invited him to Arkansas to come and see how principles of microfinance in Bangladesh could be used there in Arkansas. And so they started a program called Project Hope. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other programs in Texas, California. And in fact, just this week in, uh, in Shanghai, I met someone, a student from Yale, who told me they were the school was actually trying to support microfinance. Now they only have really? seven clients, but mm -hmm. um, it's wonderful to see all of these initiatives yeah. starting. Mm -hmm. mm. But it starts from small. Everything starts from small. Yes. So um, what about Hong Kong? Do you think, uh, you know, you got an office here, right? you, you, you live mm -hmm. in here in Hong Kong, you can see we have property in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and it's really, really alarming to our society whether we uh, mm -hmm. hurt our harmony of the whole society. What do you think? Yeah, well, I think the, the power of microfinance in Hong Kong has been unexplored. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you. When I, I lived in Hong Kong once before in 1999 to 2000, and I, I feel like I must have lived here with blinders on mm -hmm. uh, because I didn't appreciate that there was poverty here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now here, spending more time in the new territories, traveling there, and also just even in, the, in Hong Kong Island, or excuse me, on Hong Kong Island, you can see temporary settlements True. and people living. True. I think there is potential. You first of all have people who are very driven to take advantage of opportunity. And most people don't have that opportunity, so when given the chance, yes. they try to move that forward. Yes. Um, I think the critical piece will be to acknowledge that microfinance in development Developed countries is different than microfinance in developing countries, both in terms of quantum, so the amount you're providing. In India, it might be a hundred dollars. Yeah, in difference. Hong Kong, it may be the equivalent of two thousand yes. U.S. dollars. But also that you may need to support provide business development services. What microfinance relies upon in in some of the poorest parts of the world is that people have survival skills. They know how to raise an animal. They know how to yes, yes, uh, yes. grow vegetables. They know how to paint nails, cut hair. Uh, how we maybe develop it's not a, a, you know apply in Hong Kong it's not work maybe right. it doesn't work well I think I think it's too early to say whether it will work or not and I certainly mm, wouldn't dismiss okay. it but we have to imagine it within a new context but the principles still remain I think mm. there is opportunity for people who don't have access to finance to change their lives and it's it's up to you know all of us who care about these issues to try to find solutions and find social entrepreneurs here mm. which is a growing trend I'm amazed every day by the number of social entrepreneurs I meet here in Hong Kong mm -hmm. for them to find ways to solve again local solutions to local problems oh, mm. local solution to local problems yes. so we have to find local entre social entrepreneurs to solve the social problems here that's why we set up social ventures Hong Kong. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, but start from small amount, like in Hong Kong, like in developed countries, what do you think, what kind of business they, they may develop, like in the U.S., any cases already? Well, you know, again, I, this is not my area of specialty, mm. um, but for example, uh, Alex Counts, our founder, wrote a book that compared um, the experience of families in Bangladesh taking microfinance services and a program that was on the south side of Chicago. Mm. So some examples mm. that I can give you from that are to start a small store. Mm. You know, you drive around Wang Chai and there's all these <laughs> okay. little stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so one of the things one of the women there did there was start a record store mm. and also sell candy to oh, children. Okay. And, you know, it's not a store in its most traditional sense. She cater to a number of different people. So 
some people have artistic、mm. skills, so it may be creating cards or paintings or different things like that. So it may be it's probably not growing vegetables or, yeah, or yeah, yeah. raising agri- a milk buffalo or things、mm-hmm. like that. But it could be a hair salon.、Yes. It could be a nail salon.、Mm. Um, it's things like this that that are that are great. And when I talk about providing support to those people, it can be things like mentoring them, linking、oh, them to、yeah. a business professional yes, here in Hong yes, Kong yes. who can help mentor them. But also, given that you're living in a very developed economy, you probably have to have accounting experience and other things because、yes. the government will expect you to, you know. Uh, participate、uh, yes. in the, the legal、mm-hmm. and regulatory requirements. So, essentially, I think there are those kinds of opportunities.、Mm. Maybe more diversified than in rural areas. I think that's、mm. right. I think that's very right. And you mentioned about the mentorship. Do you think it's very important to practice microfinance with a mentor to、mm-hmm. help them to grow their business、mm-hmm. together? I think mentors. Are always important. They have been an extraordinarily powerful force in my own career, professional, and also personal development.、Yes. These are people who you can have very open, honest per- conversations with, who can guide you, and who often let you make mistakes and reward you for doing that.、Mm. And that's you know something that we all have to learn in life and things that we have to do. I think that in the microfinance field. We actually try to pair mentors with microfinance institutions. So I was speaking with a very successful、uh, banker about mentoring some of the microfinance institutions we support in China,、mm-hmm. and providing a strategic mentorship to them. Just this week, when I was in Shanghai, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's one example. But as you come into developed country microfinance, the actual woman who's borrowing, I think there is opportunity、mm. um, because microfinance is on such a larger scale, and you're、mm. actually talking about a small business.、Mm. Um, that I think there are opportunities to make this happen. It has、mm. to make sense for both parties, but I certainly think it's something that should be considered. Mm-hmm. But how can you recruit those mentors because they may, at like volunteer, they、mm-hmm. don't have, they they are not paid for to help、mm-hmm. the the poor to to grow their business,、mm-hmm. right? Well, I think this is something that's changing in society today,、mm. and it's come more to the forefront in light of the current financial and economic environment we find ourselves in today.、Uh, particularly, people in the financial sector are doing a little inward reflection、yeah, and、really? thinking about after the、yeah. financial tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. How they can use their skills to give back to the community、oh, and think、sure. a little more broadly. So, for example, there are financial institutions that organize these kinds of things. There's also an organization called the Women's Foundation、okay. here in Hong Kong that's looking at how they pair mentors.、Mm. There are initiatives here in Hong Kong that I'm aware of that make that happen. But also, Grameen Foundation as an organization, one of our newest initiatives is around how you tap. Volunteers, those who want to support the poor and may not be able to do it financially, or may not be able to commit huge, huge amounts of time, like six months, yes, yes. but want to provide support on an ongoing basis, we can link those、uh, those two people up. And it's not just to support our work, but we're looking to grow this program to support. The microfinance industry as a whole. So as we get better structure and organization, pairing people, the the sort of demand and the、mm, supply will yes, happen. Yes. Right now, it's so disconnected and fragmented.、Yes. We're missing those connections, but、yes. I see a real opportunity now to make that、mm, happen. That's very good.、Mm. You got the talent pool getting together. Yes. And again, our advertising here, Social Ventures Hong Kong, is also a platform to gather those volunteers who want to help the social innovation and the different projects. Like the uh, uh, microfinance, and、uh, maybe we will develop later. Then we can get more people from finance、exactly. in this industry. They got that knowledge, they got the、mm-hmm. insight, they got、mm-hmm. the network. This、yeah. is a social capital for the、yeah. poor. It's very important.